Okay guys, come crochet this welcome wardrobe edition with me. It is something that can be worn as a scarf, a shawl, or even a cover for a swimsuit. You can add additional rows to make it uh, as long as you want. But here's what you're going to need to get started. You're going to need a pair of scissors, a needle for weaving in your ends, and of course a crochet hook. Now the pattern recommends that you should be using a K hook with a worsted weight 4 ply yarn. That is not something that I chose to do. You're going to need at least 16 ounces of yarn for this project. You can use acrylic, cotton, uh, cotton acrylic blend, depending on what you're going to use this for. You could even use it for wool if you want, but it is something that is going to be a very nice light and airy shawl. And, um, yeah. So, my yarn that I am using today is Stitch Studio Classic and that is by um, Nicole which used to be AC Moore's brand and as you know I have a ton of this stuff so that's what I'm going to be using this is a lilac marl and that is what I'm using for this shawl today. The previous shawl that I had done was done with Karen Simply Soft and I did use a J hook with that one and it was done with a J hook like I said and Saturday nights by um, Karen Simply Soft but that brand that thing is actually um, a lighter worsted weight you know I would call it just slightly lighter this one is a little bit more fluffy as you can see it is substantially thicker so this is something that um, I'm going to use my 7 millimeter hook with for it and yeah I am not going to show you the crochet stitches but I am going to tell you the stitches that you need to know to do there will be a written pattern and the written pattern not sure if I'm going to put that up on Google or put it up in the community page or even on the uh, group page on Facebook but I'll put it up somewhere so you can get a copy of it. It uh, uses a chain stitch, treble stitch, double crochet stitch, single crochet and uh, does call for a slip stitch. You will, will be skipping some stitches here and there and um, you're kinda gonna be working in the in spaces instead of actual stitches in, for part of this. So let's get started. Okay, first we're going to start with the slip knot and then we are going to chain six. From here you will do a triple triple crochet into the next to the last stitch or the fifth stitch from your hook and you will put one treble crochet into that stitch and then you will put two stitches into the last stitch. and that forms the point of the shawl. 
then you for your second row you're going to chain four turn your work and here begins where we do the working into the spaces we've done our chain four and now we are going I've already turned now we are going to put two treble crochets into the first spaces which means you're not going into the stitch you're going to go in between the two stitches and there is two and now we go into the next space put two more and here where we had our chain four space we are actually going to put three treble crochets and then we will chain four and turn our work that's what it looks like so far okay now we've turned and now we're ready to work row three row three begins with two treble crochets in the first two spaces and then we will skip a space put two trebles into the next space Oops. it's a little harder to do around a camera than you think it is folks and then again we will skip the next space and put two into the next and then the chain four space is going to get three treble crochets up some more yarn here I'll be back in camera range in just a second and our final stitch chain four and turn and this is what we have so far of course there's your point there's the first three rows now row four is going to be the row that you will repeat throughout the shawl until you have reached 30 rows I'll do that twice with you and then I will pause so that you can get worked up to the 30 rows finished and then we will start some edging here is how the fourth row goes and of course these are all in English terms English terminology US terms you're going to put two treble crochets into the first space as usual the first two spaces always get two trebles crochets sometimes I miss and then the next 
for the repeating row you will skip a stit a space and then two treble into the next skip the next space two treble into the next and I know I crochet fast so if you need to slow it down there are gears on the video and you can slow it down if you need to slow it down to see what I'm doing but it's pretty simple stitch you'll skip the next space to treble into the next space then you'll skip another space to treble into this next space some more yarn up here and then the chain 4 space will get 3 treble crochets and then you will chain 4 and turn and that's what we have as you can see it is building up fairly quickly on both sides because you have all those stitches together and I'm going to repeat this next row with you one more time and then I will pause the video and meet up with you when we get to the 30th row and you can actually do more than 30 rows if you choose um, I know I did on the blue one with the Karen Simply Soft I added quite a few rows you just want to keep them fairly even the numbers it really doesn't matter though you can still do it but row 4 again the repeat is two double two triple crochets into the first two spaces then you will skip a space and two treble into the next space skip a space go into the next space two trebles skip a space, two trebles into the next space skip another space, two trebles into the next space skip a space, two trebles into the next space skip a space, two trebles into the next space and then we are at our chain 4 space of the previous row so we will put 3 treble crochets and then you will chain 4 and turn 
and you will just repeat that row for 30 rows. All right, I'm going to pause it and I'll catch up to you when we're ready to start the edging. There are actually three rows to the edging and the third row is repeated for three to four rows depending on how large you want it. You can actually actually make it bigger because you're going to do edging on these sides here and you can make it much larger but with the three rows you're probably adding about three inches, four inches on the sides. So determine how large you want to make yours and I'll meet you up then. Okay, I've worked myself up to the end. I'm ready to start. Got my 30 rows and I'm ready to start my um, edging. So let me remove my stitch marker. And the first part of this edging goes exactly like this. You're now going to chain one and then you're going to turn your work to where you are working along the side edges of the shawl and you are simply around each one of these legs all the way down your row you're going to work four single crochets around each leg And that is simply what you're going to do until we get down to the point. Each leg gets four. And you're just going to move down the edge there. Continue on until you get down to your point and then I'll show you what happens in the point. Now I'm almost up to my point, so I still have four more singles to do. Now what I like to do with this is I actually like to go further into the stitch and not just right here at the very tip. So here into this you're going to put two single crochets and I generally try to leave my tail back and out of the way because now you're going to do on the other side all the way up that length you are going to continue with the four single crochets into each leg until you reach the other side at the top and then we will work on row two so pause the video work your way up and I'll meet you back in a few minutes now I'm up to the other side of the edge I'm going to place my whoops pull that a little tighter these are my last four on here And now I'm up to this edge and row two begins by chaining four and you're going to turn that work and now you are going to put a double crochet into the first stitch here into this first stitch double crochet then you are going to chain one you're going to skip a single crochet double crochet into the next chain one skip one 
double crochet into the next and you are going to do that all the way down this side until you get to the point and then I will show you what we are going to do in the point so once again pause the video and work your way down your road to the point I'll catch up with you down at the point now I'm coming up to my point again here I still have a couple of, row, a couple of double crochets to add in and here is my point so I'm going to do another double crochet I'm going to skip one and into this one I am going to put double crochet chain one double crochet chain one and double crochet so that you have three double crochets into that top point now I didn't tell you you needed a stitch marker but I do this for a reason I put a stitch marker in that center double crochet because I've been known to blow right past it when I'm doing my subsequent rows so um, you might want to have a stitch marker on hand to do that and then you're just going to go back into that pattern you were before where you chain one skip one double crochet into the next chain one skip one double crochet into the next and you will repeat that all the way to the top and when you get to that top I'll meet you back in a few minutes and we'll do row three okay I'm up to the other side again let me finish up to that point Sorry, holding over my pattern. Now we're going to chain four again and turn the work. And from here, you're going to place a double crochet into the first stitch. That is a single crochet you're going to chain one and then you're going to put a double crochet into the next double crochet chain one double crochet in top of the next double crochet and you're going to repeat that all the way down to the center point and um, you know the drill I'm going to pause it I'll meet up with you again when we get to the point and I will show you what happens in the point but this is your repeat row you're going to repeat this row three more times um, you can actually do more if you choose to but three more times was plenty for me in uh, the previous one that I worked so um, like I said it's entirely up to you that is the beauty of the captivating shawl you can actually add more rows to make it as large as you want or as small as you want which is a great proposition for us uh, rather fluffy girls because we can make it larger so I'm gonna pause the video here and I'll meet up with you when we get to the corner okay I've got one more stitch to go before I'm at the center 
and I've already removed my stitch marker there but you're once again you've got your chain one you're going to put a double crochet chain one double crochet chain one and another double crochet so you will be putting three double crochets and chain one spaces into the center point and I am once again going to place a stitch marker so I know where that is when I start repeating and of course now you're going to work up the other side with that chain one double crochet in the double crochet of the previous row and you're just going to repeat that all the way back up to the top and then you will once again do three more rows of this and then once you get finished with your three rows I am going to go ahead and tell you instead of showing you what the top consists of when you get to this top edge after you finish those three rows you know or four rows five rows whatever you wanted to do to extend your piece here is the top row and on that top row the original pattern called for slip stitching in each stitch for the top row I don't care for slip stitch on the top rows I think it tightens it up too much um, you already have a lot of give here so you don't want to really tighten it up but then once you get your rows finished here you're going to chain one and then I would just do single crochets all across the top you could do a couple of rows if you want you could do a half double crochet but I think the single crochet along the top actually makes for a nicer finish and uh, I'm gonna pull in the original that I had and show you there is the extra rows for the point So my finished edge got to here and then I did single crochets all along the top for that top border and um, it's still nice and stretchy just like the shawl was originally and that's what I did with the top for the for the top rows you can do whatever you want that's what I wound up doing the only other thing they have you do is finish off and then weave in the ends but uh, the original called for fringe I don't care for fringe but you are more than welcome to add fringe to yours if you choose to um, she had a note in there that the fringe went all up and down the sides and the bottom but um, I'm not a fan of fringe so that's it that's the captivating shawl I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at scraptasticyarns at gmail.com and um, I'll get back to you as soon as possible. But yeah, there is, that is the captivating shawl. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you make plenty. They make great beach cover-ups for your swimsuit. Um, no, I'm not going to show you mine because I'm extra fluffy and uh, I just don't uh, wear bathing suits very often when I go for my water aerobics with my friend I usually wear a pair of shorts and a tank top so uh, yeah that's it so everybody be well be safe and as always be kind